of things hope for. What do we hope for? Something you have not seen, something you are hoping for, something you are believing God for. Another, another talk, another verse says, Faith unlock the supernatural thing that is yet to happen. He unlocks the supernatural thing that is yet to happen. When you have faith, the mountain will move. We have people of faith in this verse of scripture. Abraham is a man of faith. Abel, faith worked for him through his sacrifice. Enoch was interpreted, was translated through death from God. Because God was, had translated not found because God has translated him. Noah had in faith because God told him, build an act for me. He never knew what would happen. Take your family, take the animals into the act, build this act for me. He had that on faith because he never knew what God has in stock for him, but he's working in faith. But tonight we are going to talk mostly on Abraham, Abraham's faith. And even Abraham was called a friend of God. Yes. According to Abraham's faith, God asked him to leave his territory and go to another country that he would give him the place. He will inherit the land for him. Let's go to Genesis 15 and 1 to 5. 1 to 6. Genesis 15. Abraham's faith. What for him? Abraham. Genesis 15. Yes, verse 1, one, one to 6. six. Yeah. After these days, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. Yes. And the vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your sheep, your seemingly good woman. Whatever I said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go check this? And here are my houses, a desert of Damascus. The Abraham said, Look, you have given me no option. Indeed, one born in my house in my head is, is my head. And behold, the word of the Lord come, came to him, saying, This one shall not be your head, but one who will come for your whole body shall be your head. Then he brought him out and said, Look now to him and call the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall the sinners be. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Now, according to the verse of scripture, then Abraham was seeking the eyes of God for the fruit for a head. And God asked him to look and count the stars. And when he counted the stars, he said, those shall be your heads. In that verse of scripture, he told him that he shall be father of nation. That is, because the, the, the stars are more than what he can handle. Now, he said, faith Following God in faith goes a long way. Many people have been believing God for so many things, especially many, many things, both materially, both emotionally, both physically, and faith is not still working for you. What are the things? Because all these people in the Bible have experienced and tasted the work of faith. And this faith has worked for them. Why is it not working in your life? Number one, Abraham followed God. When you follow God, faith will work for you. Abraham followed God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Verse 1, verse 1 to 4. 
He said, he followed God. So, verse 1. Get out of the country from your family and from your father's house. To the land that I will show you, I will make you a great nation, I will bless you. I will make your name good, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will cause him who causes you. Yes. And in you, of the family of the Lord. So Abraham departed as the Lord and had spoken to him, and Lord, and went with him. And the brothers of God was 25 years old when he departed from Abraham. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In this verse of scripture, God says he should depart from his land and go to another land to inherit that land. And Abraham never hesitates because he followed God to the letters. In everything he is doing, he believed in him. He said he will take charge, he will inherit the land that he should go forth. Everybody will bless thee. The door will be open. Now, I want to urge everybody watching me tonight, O Lord, and everybody can we still see a man of faith like Abraham? Now, the major thing we are going to do now is let's hold on on faith. He says, Abraham and Sarah had to wait for 25 years. How many people can wait for that 25 years in these days? They wait for 25 years for their son to be born. Because what? It is true faith. Number one, they had faith. Number two, they are patient. There are two things. When you have faith, you have to have patience along to energize your faith to come to work. Patience come along with faith. Believe goes along with faith. When you believe, you keep into the word of God and have patience. And look that God, what God will do for you and let God establish his, money, his work in your life. Now, he said, they have faith and they have patience. And what? They inherit the land. They inherit the land. Can we go to, and they inherit the promises of what? Of God. When you have faith, you believe. Number one, you have to believe before you have faith. Faith and belief goes together. They will match it up with your patience. Many people want it immediately. As you tell God, you want it immediately. But it takes a process. What are the process? The process is patience. For you to have an answered prayer. The process is what? Patience. Obedience. You have to be obedient into what God is saying. You keep into God's word by what? Obedience. You have to be obedient and know, hear the word and follow the word as it's coming to you. Now, he said, you will inherit what the promises of God when you have faith. When you believe in him, you believe you walk in it, you have patience, and you will know him. Then your faith will come to work. All these things work along together. And he said, Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that he will give what? Him. Obedience. Obedient. He was obedient to God. Can we check Hebrews 6, verses 12? Hebrews 6, verses 12. That he be 
be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith yes. and patience inherit the promises. Yes, it says, like a song, it says, trust and obey. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Now, he said, when you walk in the light and trust and obey, then you can go and have the key of this faith, and this faith will work for you. According to the word of God, he said, there is nothing, for nothing will be impossible for what? For God. Luke 1, chapter 37. He said, for nothing will be impossible with God. That's what we used to say. What does not exist, what God has not done, does not exist. What God cannot do, does not exist. Now, he said, for nothing will be impossible with God. And second Corinthians also said, 5 7, he said, for we walk by what? By faith. And not by what? By sight. Faith is very wild. If we go from now till tomorrow, we can't finish it. But I will leave some five points of faith. How we can walk in this faith. And how this faith can work for us as a person. Second Corinthians 5 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by what? By sight. And Romans 10 17 said, So faith comes by what? Hearing. By hearing. And hearing, and hearing what? Through the word of God. How many people want to hear the word of God? And many, how many people can sit down and hear the word of God? And you want faith to work for you. When you sit down, you hear the word, you meditate in the word, you walk in the word, and you let the word, the word to walk through you. Just like the, we used to say in, in those who say, uh, do you pass through school? You let you pass through school, they let school pass through you. So this is how faith will work for you. Now Hebrews 11, 1, chapter 11, chapter 1. Which is saying, now, he said, now faith is the assurance of what? Things happen for the conviction of things not seen. It's just like a magic. You have it in mind that, ha, this thing must work for me. Do you know if you are believing God for something, you have to walk towards it? Faith is dead if you don't walk towards it. So you have to walk towards what? This faith you are having. You just don't believe in God and go and sleep. You say you want to pay your house rent and you are sleeping Monday to Friday without going to go to, to work and you want to pay your house rent. At the time in it, you will be expecting miracle to happen. Miracle will not happen. No. You have to walk. If you're having faith towards something, you have to walk towards it and leave the rest. Delivering the rest is your patience. Then you allow God to work, to walk. That patience you are having, you are walking towards it and you leave it into God's hand. And God will manifest His glory over that particular thing you want. Now, He said, Faith can move mountain. When you have not, when you have faith, faith can move what? Mountain. Matthew 17, 20. Can somebody read that for us? Matthew 17, 20. So yes. Jesus said to them, God of them, how believe? For I shall not say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, 
you will say to this mountain, move from here to there yes. and to move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Hallelujah. Do you know Abraham battled with God for the for the people of Sodom? He talked to God for the people of Sodom. Sodom. Which he says, Bought me, he said, and God to be glorious, gracious. All to the world, the righteous people in Sodom. Ask God to show mercy. He asks what? God to show mercy. That is why they call him the friend of God. Abraham, the what? The friend of God. That one is in Genesis chapter 18, verses 22 to 33. We will come back there. Let's proceed now. He said, Abraham willing to offer Isaac as a sacrifice to what? To God. That is what? Obedience. He talks about what? Obedience. Abraham obeyed God. And he walked in faith that, ah, let me sacrifice according to how God is telling him to do, told him to do. And he moved and he followed him. And by the time he wants to do the sacrifice, and God called him again, look behind you. There's a lamb there. Can anybody do that in our flesh of these days? <laughs> oh, faith unlock the supernatural thing that is yet to happen. Your faith can move mountain. Now he said, for without faith, it is dead. If you don't have faith, nothing will work in your life. Let's look at James chapter 2, verses 16 to 18. James 2, verses 16 to 18. James 2, verse 16 to 18. James 2, 16. Yeah. Now, one of you says to them, Depart in peace, yes. in one and field. Yes. But you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. Yes. What does it profit? 17. Does also faith by itself. If it does, if it does not have works, it's dead. 18. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by and my works. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some lessons here which I want to establish from Abraham, father of faith. We call him father of faith. Yes. He says, number one, the first lesson. He said, follow God even through the path. Follow God even. Though the path is not completely clear, you follow me. If the path is somehow cloudy, still follow him. That is believing in God. Follow him. Number two, he said, trust God. Trust God's promises and face into adversity when it's what? Arises, you trust God. When adversity comes around, when it arises, you trust in Him. Number three, He said, boldly ask God for Him to save and help others around you. You boldly ask God. You ask God to save people around you. Number four, He said. Expect God to do great things, even impossible things in your life. Things that are impossible. Expect God to do it in your life. There are some things which we are all desiring. That is, when it comes, is overwhelming. And at a 
particular time, you're asking God to give you these particular things. And these things, God knows that if He give it to you at this particular time, is your destruction. Yeah. God has purpose and time for everybody. So, when God is holding back some things and you are praying to God, you are praying to God, you are walking towards it, He had, He answered your prayers, but not yet time. And there is time and purpose. That is why we walk in patience along with God. He said, Be willing to take what? A chance on God. Be willing to take a chance. On God and with God. Take every step with God. Take every step on God. Now, many people are believing God. How strong is your faith? How can you go about talking to people about faith? And faith is not working in you. We have a lot of people, a lot of pastors, they will preach about faith. And that faith is not still working yet in them. It takes God and it takes you to connect with God before you can enjoy in the realm of faith. They said Abraham was called the friend of what? God. That is James 2.23. Because the faith was so strong and he turned out to be a talking mate with God. They start discussing, start negotiating over Sodom that are there 50, 55 righteous people for him to destroy. He said, no, they are 40, 45, they are 40. Till they get to 10. He was discussing with God that he should not perish. The soul. That because of these ten people, will you will you cast down this city? So God is so faithful in all his ways. So I will tell everybody tonight: let us walk in faith and let faith walk through us. My message tonight is faith in God. Before you can enjoy this faith working for you, you have to surrender everything to God for you to enjoy the faith in God. You have to have a good communication with God. Number one, you have to be obedient in anything God says to you. In his ways and direction, you have to be patient for him to walk. You don't believe in it now and expect it to happen immediately. So we have to key into his work so that things can work properly in our life. Furthermore, In the life of Abel, he had a sacrifice to God, believing God, that God would take his sacrifice. And God accepted his sacrifice through faith. Noah talked about faith when he was building the ark. God asked him to go and build the ark for him. He built the ark. In faith, he never knew what would happen. He was just building. He was just building. At times, God would tell you, do this, do this, just obey and do it. But people who will ask, be asking more money. God, I come fast though. And there are some prices you have to pay for this thing to. You, at times, we go into fasting and prayer for God to manifest. Some things for you. There are some things you have to pay back to him. And there are some things you have to like in exchange for what God wants to do in your life. You can say it's like a vow. 
If God do this for me, I will do this for him. There are some things that you have to key into. That is the secret of faith. Before faith can work in your life. Those are the secrets. Make a vow, a pledge for God. God, if you do this for me, God tell me, I will do this for you in return. God don't want your money. He doesn't want your food. But make sure things that the, the most expensive thing that you will really cherish, that really gets to you, make a vow on it. That God, this Now, it said faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing what? The word of God. And it said, faith is an assurance of things of for the conviction of things not seen. If you don't see things, how can you believe that it will happen? But through faith, it will happen. So, let's thank God and let's key for God opening our eyes into this world of faith tonight. So, I'll be wrapping up and Daddy will be taking the service from him. Hallelujah. 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 What a powerful message from faith. Faith is what you and I need most in this world. Because it says that without faith it is not possible to please God. And 1 John 5 4 says, Even our faith that overcomes the world. He didn't say, Even your prayers that overcomes the world. He didn't say, Even your fasting. He didn't say, even your holiness. He said, even your faith. Let's even go there. 1 John 5, 4. Let's read it. 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, 4. 1 John 5, 4. Yes. Whatever is born of God. Whoever is born of God. Overcomes so said, the world. Overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith. Mm-hmm. Who is... Verse 5. Mm-hmm. Who is he who overcomes the world? Mm-hmm. But he will believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. He said, Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And how does he overcome the world? Through faith. Through faith. So it's not how much you can pray, or how much you can fast, or how much you can attend church. But it is your faith that will overcome the world. This is the most important thing that you and I need in this world. Now, why is it so hard for people to get this quality, this ingredient? Well, it's simply because faith is a spirit. It's also one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, this faith I'm talking about is not head knowledge. It's not that, oh, I believe in my head that God exists. Or, I believe this. No, no, no. Your faith is in your heart. It's a spirit. Now, how do I know that? Let's go to James chapter 2. And see what it says there about believing with your head knowledge. James 2, verse 19. Huh? I told you believe that. He said, Thou believest there is one God, he said, Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. That means that if your faith is limited to what you believe in, you are not better than the devils. Because they believe the presence of God. You know, they were all in the presence of God before they were cast away. Before they became devils, they were all holy angels before. So you cannot have faith more than the devils because they've been in God's presence. They know God intimately more than you. 
So if your faith is based on your head knowledge, that is nothing. Because head knowledge is what you see, right? What you see with your eyes, that is head knowledge faith. The faith that will overcome the world, the faith that you and I need, is more than head knowledge. It is of your heart. That's why it says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, when you hear the word of God, it opens your life to the spirit of faith. And faith is made alive in you. And it's that spirit of faith that will overcome the world, that will move the mountain of problems before you. So faith is a supernatural factor. It is not a kernel or fleshly thing that you can hold or see. No, it's a spirit. And that's why many people don't have it. One, they don't read the word of God. So if they don't read the word of God, they cannot hear and they cannot have the faith. Two, most people have unbelief in their hearts. They base their faith on what they can see. For instance, someone will tell you today, look, you, you're going to become the next president of Canada. You say, what? Me? <laughs> you must be drunk. But you can believe it. If truly you believe it, it will come to pass. Because it's not a work of the flesh. If it's something you're going to do, I can say, yes, maybe. No. In the flesh, you can't. But in the spirit, you can. Because that faith you need to get to that position is a spiritual force. It's a spiritual force. Now, for you to really, really show your faith, you must couple it with works. Let's go to that same chapter, uh, James 2. Second verse uh, 9, 20. But do you know, mm -hmm. do you want to know mm -hmm. of which man? Yes. That faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. What's up? Faith without works is dead. Okay, go on. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. Was not Abraham our father justified by works uh -huh. when he offered Isaac his son mm -hmm. on the altar? You see? Do you, do you see that faith was working together with his works? Let's talk briefly there. God told Abraham to go and sacrifice his son, right? That was the instruction. Abraham would have said, God, I believe you, yes. You spoke to me and said, oh. And many people like that, this will God tell them to do things. They say, I know God said it, but they don't do it. Because they don't really believe in their hearts. You see, Abraham obeyed God. Why? Because he believed God would give him another son if he killed Isaac. That was what in his heart when he took the knife to stab in Isaac's son. He truly believed that this God that gave me this son at the age of 99 or age of 100, he can also give me another son. It was his belief in God that made him take his son and to have sacrifice. If he didn't believe he's going to have another son, he wouldn't have taken Isaac. So he supported his faith with his works. And it was his works that God saw that made him to be justified. Because if I said, Oh God, I believe you, yes. I believe you spoke to me. I said, God, I can't kill my son. I can't kill my son because if I kill my son, then what else do I have? After he gave me this one anyway, how can you ask me to do any of this? He could have done that. But because he believed in his heart that God would give him another son, that's what made him. What I want to tell you, your faith to be effective must be supported by your works. Let's go on there. Hmm. Was not Do you see that faith mm -hmm. was working together with his works? Yes. And by the works, faith was made perfect. Mm -hmm. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God. Yes. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Uh -huh. And he was called the friend of God. Okay. Verse 24. You see there that a man is justified by works uh -huh. and not by faith only. A man is justified. That means that man is made clear before God by his works, not by faith only. In other words, your faith is ineffective, impotent, without the works to support it. For instance, you can say that, I believe God has healed me. Well, if you believe God has healed you, why are you still behaving as if you have a sickness? Why are you going around complaining? Oh, I feel tired. Oh, I can't breathe. Oh, I can't sit. So, but you prayed. 
And you believe God has granted you prayer? Then begin to walk in it. A good story in the book of Acts. They were praying. God, Herod had imprisoned uh, Peter. He had planned to kill Peter because he had already imprisoned James and killed James. And so he was, people were happy about it. So he, he got Peter as well. I'm going to kill Peter after the Easter. So they were praying for Peter to be released, the disciples. And do you know that in response to their prayers, God sent an angel that took Peter out of the prison. Now, when Peter got home, <laughs> this little girl, Rhoda, whatever her name is, she came, and when she heard Peter, she was like, what? Peter is at the door? She was so excited, she could not even wait to open the door for him. She just ran to the disciples. Ah, Apostle Peter, he's at the door. I was, I said, what? You are crazy, this thing. These are the same people praying for his release. <laughs> but when the girl told her, no, you, said, you must be crazy. I'm like, what do you think Peter is crazy? He's in prison, they're going to kill him tomorrow. But you are the people praying for him to be released. And now this young girl, who will not lie, comes to tell you that he's there, and you say he's crazy. But that kept on, you know, the door. Peter kept on knocking. Peter said, ah. Maybe there's some truth in this. Let's go and check. And then they saw the Peter. They were praying for him. They were praying for his release. When God answered, they did not believe it. <laughs> That's the story of most of us. When God answers our prayers, we don't believe it because we don't really believe. We are amazed. That God, you mean you actually answered this prayer? Oh, yes. He answered it. That's why you don't believe. So you must support your faith. If you believe God is doing something in your life, you must begin to walk in it. Good story. A lady came to a crusade, had the message of healing. She had a huge cross in her neck. And she went home and she prayed. She said, God, you said, the word that preacher said, you already healed me. I was healed on the cross. Wow. And she believed it. So, come evening time, evangelistic meeting, she got up. Said, brethren, Help me thank God for my healing. God has healed me of my goiter. Help me just to God. I said, is she woman crazy? What do you mean? She's, the beating is still big there in the neck. So help me rejoice and thank God for my healing. And she sat down and said, oh, the, now the Lord has finally gone crazy. Do you know this one kept on doing it? Every service. She would say, help me to thank God for God has healed me. I don't have to and after some time, people didn't even bother to listen to her anymore because the culture was still there. But she was saying it and she really believed it that God had healed her, even though the culture was there. That is faith. When you believe so strongly in something that despite the negative things, you believe in that thing, it will eventually come to pass. Why did it take time? Because the distance between the supernatural and the natural, that thing was coming, coming. Coming and she kept on believing it until the match in the natural. One day after six months, she slept and woke up and the water was gone. No surgery, nothing. The neck was completely flat. When she got up this time, she said, What? They didn't believe, she believed, and eventually she got her prize, what she wanted. That's the Point of patience. You're going to walk with God, you're going to have patience. You're going to be like Abraham, who waited 25 years to have Isaac. You can't be like this microwave Christians we have today, who pray once and all, I've been praying for one week, and God has been answered. Oh, one week? <laughs> you're not ready to walk with God yet. God's time is not our own time. The fact that you haven't received your answers immediately does not mean that God is not going to answer you. You just keep on believing it and keep on walking it. Keep on talking it. Keep on talking your success. Oh, I'm going to, I've already got my work permit. You know? What do you mean you have work? I've already got it. But you have not, it doesn't matter. I've already got it. And I'm going to get a job in another two months' time. Keep on saying it. Even though there's no evidence, keep on believing it. That is faith. Ah, Lord, I thank you. I'm giving you a thanks offering for my work permit today. Ah, what's wrong with this? Yes, God, God. He's thanking God, yes, because he sins and he believes so strongly in it. It's as if he has it in his heart. That's his faith. You believe God has healed you. Begin to walk in that faith. Begin to 
the leg. For instance, you might have a, a leg problem or back problem, and you are praying and say, oh, God has had me. Then begin to walk as if there is no back pain. Begin to walk as if there is no hypertension. There is no. That is faith. As you are walking, your faith will meet you and be manifested. You see? Don't just sit there. I believe God has healed me. Why don't they walk? Look at the man of the beautiful kid in Astrid. You know? Peter said, money, uh, riches I don't have. You know, just just walk. The man said, what? Walk? For 40 years I've not walked? What do you mean walk? He brought him up. He said, manifest. Support your faith with your works. And the man stood up and said, straight. Somebody who has never walked over 40 years. So you need to support your faith with your works. Don't just say, I believe it. Show it. Speak it. Behave it. Let people see it. That is faith. As you are doing that, you, it will match. It will come from the natural and meet you in the natural. So from the spiritual and meet you in the natural. But you can say, I believe God will give me my, uh, my license. I believe God will give me this. And you don't manifest it. It's going to take a long time. You must match in it. You must walk in it. You must behave in it. That is the faith that will bring it to pass. You can't just say, I, I have it in my mind. No, no, that means you've got to show it. Jesus Christ said, walk. Get up and walk. Rise up and walk. That's what the most tell people tell people. Rise up and walk. Don't just sit down there. Show your faith by your works. So we learned a very important lesson tonight because this is the ingredient lacking with most Christians. You know, most of the believers have more faith than most Christians. Because they hear the message, there's nothing to doubt. Well, God said it, I believe it, that's it. And they begin to, and they are miraculously healed. And you see all the Christians standing around and they're waiting for their healing. Because that unbeliever, he has a childlike faith. He had the message, believed it, and suddenly the miracles happened to his life. So, this is very important. Let us walk, let us believe God. But this faith you have, can only be strengthened when you read the word of God. Because the spirit is not by going to crusades and watching miracles. That's not going to give you faith. No. As you read the word of God, it will open your heart to that spirit. It will give you that faith that will manifest from the supernatural to the natural. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you're watching me today and you are not aware of this faith, or you have not believed in God, for instance, you haven't believed in God your salvation, you don't believe that God can save you. You think, I'm so rotten. You don't know what I've done. I've raped so many women. I've killed so many people. Well, believe it tonight. Just accept it. Don't question how. Just say, God, I believe you that you died on the cross for me. And by that, I'm saved. That's all you have to do. You see? That's all that a little child. If you believe that, Lord Jesus, I've sinned against God and man. Have mercy and forgive me my sins today. Wash my sins away with the precious blood. Come inside my heart and begin to roll and read over my life. Take my name from the book of the dead and put my name in the book of life. And I will serve you for the rest of my days. Thank you for saving my life. Thank you for the gift of faith. Because your word says you have saved through grace. By faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Save my soul today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. That's it. Simple prayer. You believe it, just believe it. Don't question how it's going to be done. Just believe it. That's all. That word will work in you and bring you to salvation. Let us pray. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, will be Amen. The God of all faith, the author of our finish of our faith. Thank you for this powerful word of ex exhortation today. Amen. Father, open our hearts to the spirit of faith. Amen. Let us not walk anymore by what we see with our eyes or what we think by head knowledge. Because even the devils have that. Bring us into realization of the spirit of faith. Amen. That we will walk in our hearts and bring things from the supernatural to the natural forms. 
Deliver us from unbelief. Deliver us from doubting. Deliver us from laziness. Give us the heart to walk in our faith. To show the world what we believe in. That we can please you and that your name be glorified in our lives. Amen. In Jesus, mighty and righteous name, I pray. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. That's it. Please read this passage again. Let God minister to you. Let him give you a spirit of faith to overcome the world. Oh, man.